I'm making this video compliments of Jerry Day for anyone who is not comfortable cooperating with the uh, the census. The cattle drive is what I call it. Because what they're doing is they're just checking on its on its uh, property, its cattle. It's And they want to vaccinate us just like they do cattle. But anyway, here here's Jerry Day on how you can uh, avoid this. This video is to help people who are not entirely comfortable with giving personal information to strangers as the census asks you to do. I'm going to point you to a free download document to help you protect yourself and your family. This video is sponsored by My Patriot Supply, one of the nation's top suppliers of emergency survival food. The COVID-19 crisis showed all of us how important long-term food storage is for our household safety and security. In their food package kits, My Patriot Supply uses the latest technology to give their food kits up to 25 years storage life with super durable packaging and oxygen absorbers to help keep foods usable for much longer storage times. With the global lockdown, demand for emergency stored food has skyrocketed, so delivery times are up to eight weeks. But now is the time to put in your order so you can be fully prepared for that next emergency. The next crisis might see grocery stores closing or even more products being cleaned off the shelf. So this is the perfect solution. Please support this video and go to preparewithjerry.com to see the long-term food storage kits from My Patriot Supply. So what if you don't feel like answering a lot of personal questions in the 2020 census? First, it's important to know the difference between the constitutionally authorized decennial census and the government survey and surveillance program called the American Community Survey, or ACS, which is performed every year without any constitutional authorization at all. The Census Bureau administers both those programs, but they're generally conducted independently of each other. The standard 2020 decennial census uses a 12-page form, and there are likely to be some questions on that form that make you uncomfortable. The American Community Survey is a longer form with more questions, and it will likely make you even more uncomfortable. Also, the ACS form takes quite a bit of time to complete, and no one can explain why you should be asked to donate that time and a lot of very personal information. It looks like if you are willing to share your personal information, government is not shy about asking you for it, and it's just up to you to say no. There is a federal statute imposing penalties on people who refuse to cooperate with the decennial census, but that statute is unconstitutional, and I don't know of anyone who has ever been prosecuted under the statute in recent years. If they are reckless enough to prosecute someone for not cooperating with the census, that could be appealed to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court would have no legal option other than to throw out any federal code or statute which threatens prosecution for non-cooperation with the census, because the Constitution does not give government authority to prosecute people for that. In fact, the First, Fourth, and Fifth Amendments of the Bill of Rights all, in different ways, protect your right of privacy and to not be forced to provide your private information to anyone. Now, I'm not giving legal advice. These are just opinions. But any statute that requires you to give personal information to government is clearly not legally enforceable. Anyone who threatens prosecution for that is violating the Constitution and technically committing treason. So government, apparently, has made the wiser decision to not prosecute people who don't cooperate with the census, so that statute will remain on the books, and they can use the threat of prosecution to intimidate the public into cooperating with the census, even though there's no legitimate force behind that threat. Making threats to people who wish to protect their privacy is one of the very many examples where honesty and integrity are not high priorities of government. In the 2020 census, when census workers came to my door, I stood firm and I offered only what the Constitution calls for, the number of people residing at my address. They did threaten me. They did send multiple census workers to my home to intimidate me, but I politely declined their request for personal information. I was not reported to any authorities. I was not referred to any law enforcement. No one tried to prosecute me, and the census workers stopped bothering me after a couple of visits. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with cooperating with the census and giving them your personal information. Anyone can choose to do that. 
There is also nothing wrong with only providing the number of people living in your household and no other information, because counting people is all that the Constitution authorizes government to do, and that is all they should be doing. Government can't seem to resist inventing imaginary authorities for itself, and honestly, we have to draw the line somewhere. The Constitution does not require you to cooperate at all with the census. It simply gives the government the task of counting people so they will know how many representatives should serve in the Congressional House of Representatives. When the census was created, the government was seen as a servant, inferior to the people. Our government and public schools have now spent over 250 years telling us that we are here to serve and obey government and that government is our master. We must continually remind ourselves that we created government. We own it. We have every right to do with it as we wish. And if we do not wish to ultimately be enslaved by it, we occasionally have to actively resist and oppose its tendency to falsely self-authorize. It is interesting to note that the federal government is constitutionally required to have one congressional rep representative for every 30,000 citizens. Nearly every state now has fewer representatives than the Constitution requires. So in that case, it is the government, not you, that is breaking the law. But how the census affects you is in the Constitution, and it's clear. Nowhere does it require any citizen to allow themselves to be counted, nor does it authorize anyone to force anyone to cooperate with the census. And it certainly does not authorize the collection of personal data or any other surveillance activity against innocent citizens. So how you cooperate with the census must be your choice. Since the 2010 census, it has been disclosed that the United States government unlawfully conducts mass surveillance on the personal lives of every American by collecting our credit card data, recording our phone calls, intercepting our emails, social network activity, mountains of data from countless other sources. Obviously, with that type of mass surveillance going on, government already has more information on us than they could ever collect with any census. Because of that, there's no reason to even conduct a census at this point. So the ex exercise of filling out forms and collecting personal information is not only unauthorized, it's totally unnecessary. Our refusal to provide information in the census does not deprive government of any information it does not already have. In fact, the census represents a rather embarrassing pretense that they do not already have our personal information. They do. But just because they have information does not mean that they should have it. Now, there are people who will say how useful, valuable, and important census data is for formulating public policy and appropriating public funds. They're right, apart from the fact that government already has the information and they are not authorized to collect it in the first place. Whether we like it or not, there is no constitutional authority to force people to provide personal information to government, so it must be voluntary. That is the end of that debate. If they were allowed to forcibly collect even a little personal information, imagine how far they would go with that. Ask Edward Snowden. Of course, their unconstitutional federal statute and the government's unlimited desire for all things data, they will sometimes threaten and intimidate people to try and get compliance with the census. So if we decide to protect our privacy, we have to be aware of our rights, and we have to be prepared to, and be strong in confronting those who challenge those rights. Your census worker may not realize that census authority is limited, so it is you who would have to remind them. If you are one of those people who choose to defend your rights and guard your privacy, you have to stand up to your census worker. At freedomtaker.com, we have made that a little easier for you. At the top of the page, we have posted a short download document for free that you can copy and paste for your own use. It is a brief notice to census workers. It outlines your rights and your position on the census if you have decided to protect your privacy. You can edit that notice any way you like. If you would like to change the wording, you can do that. It informs your census worker of what they may and may not do or force you to do. In my experience, some census workers are not very good at listening. So you may have to repeatedly refer them to that document until they understand their obligations to respect your privacy and your time. It will probably be a waste of time to argue any of those points with your census worker. 
in order to have things handled as quickly and safely as possible, you just refer to the notice and tell them that is how it's going to be and say goodbye. It may be helpful to have an extra copy of the notice to give them before you shut the door. Again, this is only for those who are interested in protecting their privacy and security. If you want to invite your census worker